Hi there, it's Withered. Three years ago, when the world was forced into isolation due to the pandemic, my friends and I turned to Minecraft to keep ourselves sane. These two friends are Jimmy Sparkles, also known as Ironic Paradox, and Katsuruni, also known as Dead Luna. During our time at home, we started a small survival Minecraft world, which we named People's Craft. I was in 6th grade at the time, and had some slight skill issues with the game. Also, all the gameplay footage was recorded on my Samsung tablet, which kind of made it hard to record. Me and my friends would communicate via Skype video call, so I decided to share my screen and record the call. So I must warn you, this video is going to have a lot of extremely low quality footage, and there's not much I can do to improve it, so I will just keep it as it is in the video, but I will mute it to save your eardrums from the sound of Xbox Live Kids talking too close to the microphone. Oh, oh probably bro. That's oh. a lot of stuff. Ah, oh. watch out! He has oh. all your armor! No, no, no! no. Fight him! No. Oh. No! No! No, what the- Luke's no. killing him! Luke's killing him! Okay, okay. Go, Luke! Go, Luke! Give me my stuff! <sighs> so, let's jump into the footage and relive my very first SMP. Let's go. Suddenly, on a random tree in a random forest, two completely normal people with normal skins and one person with a cringeworthy skin popped into existence. We quickly demolished the tree and began to collect wood and look for wool to make beds. But the night quickly fell and Jimmy and Katsuruni retreated to the mountains where they began to build a primitive hut. I, though, was lost in the forest, so I ended up cowering in a makeshift shelter. There, I waited until the sun rose again. The following morning, I used my starter map to locate where the others were in the mountains. We spent a while doing a bit of crafting and then built the hut a roof, which was made out of dirt. That night, we hung out on the dirt roof of our brand new hut, planning for the next day. We decided to build a city in our world, which we will call People's Town. The next morning, we descended from our mountain in the rain and Jimmy went out to look for sheep. That night, we hung out in our hut some more. Katsuruni made her own little room to sleep in. And then Jimmy came back with the wool. So we immediately crafted some beds and got some well deserved rest. Oh, wait, never mind. We didn't even have enough beds. So, yeah, we didn't really sleep. Katsuruni worked on decorating her room a bit, and I almost became a zombie's meal. After that, nothing worth mentioning happened for the rest of that episode. Episode 1 was the only episode to have been edited, but it was by far the least interesting. Unfortunately, we encountered some issues with the recording during the next episode. I had forgotten to share my screen, resulting in the loss of footage. As a result, the only remaining piece of the second episode is the call audio, which we'll refer to as Take 1. To compensate for this, I will do my best to summarize the episode and create a slideshow of stock images to accompany it. During the episode, we stumbled upon a cave while hanging out at home and decided to explore it. However, we later discovered that someone had been taking food without our knowledge. Jimmy's brother had joined the server earlier and had proceeded to build a hut on a nearby mountain. When I attempted to construct a bridge near it, a fishing pole suddenly whisked me out of the air. I landed in the valley below where we met face to face. We had a short fist fight which ended with him dying. After that, he kind of went on a rampage and killed Gary the tree, thinking he was a normal tree. After he left the game, we decorated a memorial for the short-lived tree and planted his son in his place, Gary Jr. And that's about all I could manage to remember that happened. In the next episode, 
being episode two, take two, Jimmy was offline. So it was just Katsuruni and I for the episode. In the beginning, we can see that Katsuruni was trying to build a new part of her house, which extended out of the mountain. And it turned out that we had no food. So to keep us from starving, I went on a quest for some meat. Out of desperation, I killed a family of chickens, which made Katsuruni sad. Night fell again, and I once again cowered in a box of dirt, out of fear of monsters. But Katsuruni was quick to rescue me. Once we got back to base, I went hunting for some squid. Once I obtained a squid's ink, I crafted a book and quill. This was used to make the laws of people sound, which went as follows. 1. No killing mother animals or babies. Number 2. No killing saplings. Number 3. No killing Gary's kids. Number 4. Noobs, which I was for sure, are frowned upon. Number 5. No hogging shinies. After that, I decided to begin the construction of a strip mine. And, by the end of the episode, we had finally obtained iron. And with that, I crafted a bucket. In the next episode, dubbed Iron Age, we had another friend with us. Let's just call him Andrew. He didn't have Minecraft Bedrock -like Edition, so he was just there to commentate with us on the video. Anyway, I tried to make a water elevator off the mountain, but that really just made everyone kind of mad. Wasted glass. Wasted glass. I like... I hate to waste glass, because then it's wasted. You just wasted glass! <laughs> Porter! Oh, you After all of that, I did some mining in the mine shafts and got some more iron, coal, gold, and even redstone. At the end of the video, I made Jimmy, whose real name is Alex, a bit angry by stealing what would become his bedroom. This caused a... Just a, a tiny little skirmish. By the way, your house is the is for animals. That was supposed to be where the animals sleep, not you. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. This, this is not for you, Alex. No! 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 no. Yes! Yeah. I ended up taking Jimmy's pickaxe by accident. He realized this as I went on an expedition in the forest. The fourth episode was titled Untitled Episode, because nothing eventful happened really. It was only a few minutes long, and Jimmy Sparkles wasn't even there. So I'm just gonna skip episode 4. Episode number 5 was titled Error 404, because the Xbox Live network broke, causing me to be unable to invite anyone to the game. So I was the only person in the world for that episode. Jimmy was once again gone for the episode, but we did have Andrew to keep us company. And so the episode began, with me trying to make a dinky little farm floating in the sky. After a while of doing nothing useful, I tried to give life to a snow golem, and named him Bob. I named him Bob because I was rather uncreative with naming things. I attempted to build a transparent box for him to live in, but he died. Immediately after, I built Bob the Second, a snowman with a death witch. As soon as I built him, he walked out into the rain and died. That's normal for a snow golem. And that was the end of episode 5. Episode the 6th was called Llama Day, because it was Luna's birthday, and Luna really liked llamas. Also, Jimmy was gone again. I think he was on vacation or something, I can't remember. I started by making a small basement, right below Luna's room in a little kitchen we made. This eventually became a panic room, but I never really knew why we would need it. Luna had a funny pronunciation of the most useless block, <gasps> oh, it's my basement. It's just gonna look ugly if I do that. Hey, I found a good use for deodorite. And that's about it for episode 6. Episode 7 was titled Blues the Cat, named after a cat I tamed and gave to Luna. I had gone on a big expedition at the beginning and found an abandoned village. I looted it very, very, very slowly and got almost nothing of value. Except for one thing. I had finally obtained the most valuable thing in Minecraft, a cat. So Luna decided I should name it Blues after her real life cat. So when I got back home, she made a room above hers where Blues would stay. And that was the end of the video. 
but the discovery of a village marked the beginning of a new chapter in the history of People's Craft. Go, go, go! Episode 8 was titled Climax, and it was, as you can tell, quite the climactic episode. Jimmy had finally returned from whatever he was doing, so the trio was once again reunited. At the start of the episode, the Xbox Live Network was once again broken, causing Jimmy and Luna to be unable to join. I began to construct another snowman, which I will call Bob the Third. I did it in a small side room of our shared house, which meant that he finally lived longer than five minutes. But I accidentally opened the door, and he promptly ran for the nearest exit. At first, I thought this was another snowman with a death wish, but it was something better. He heroically ran down the mountain to attack a creeper that was suspiciously close to our house. I made the mistake of letting it stay outside as a defense mechanism, but within minutes, it began raining, and the great hero was dead. Very sad. A while later, I began trying to construct another portal with my buckets, but failed horribly due to a huge skill issue. So I gave up. Then Jimmy finally managed to join the game. After that, I went on a mining trip without bringing any food. So at the end, I made a mad dash back to the surface with an empty hunger bar. Hey, Andrew, I know I'm gonna. No, 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 I forgot to mention one more important thing that happened. Jimmy added some more laws to our nation. Number six, no killing pandas and or red pandas. And yes, I know there's no red pandas in Minecraft. Our good friend Andrew just really liked red pandas, so we made this rule just to be safe. Number seven, 10% of iron goes to the bank. And you must be asking, there's a bank? And the answer is no, we haven't made a bank yet. Also, this tax would eventually be changed to tax 10% of redstone instead of iron. Alright, back to the video. A while later, we made a ladder going to the top of our mountain. And that's all that happened for episode 8. Episode the 9th was a very special episode, where we reached an important milestone in the progression of Minecraft. The episode we named is after the milestone we reached, but I'm not going to tell you what that was, because I don't want to spoil it. The episode began like any other episode, with us doing boring Minecraft house chores. But after a while, I began mining. And you guys probably already know where this is going. After a few minutes, I found diamonds. My one and only iron pickaxe broke before I got to the diamonds, so that meant I had to spend the next 15 minutes crafting a new iron pickaxe. Once I mined my precious diamonds, I crafted a diamond pickaxe, which I wouldn't even use for the next two episodes. After towering straight up a hole that someone had previously dug straight down, I ran back home. Then, I paid Luna a diamond to renovate and expand my tiny little bedroom that clearly needs some renovations. And that was the end of a historic episode. Hey, this is Editor Withered again, this time using text to speech. I forgot to mention that Luna made a little shop. Episode 10 was called Double Climax because I got lazy with the episode names. At the start of the episode, Jimmy and I did a little bit of exploring. Jimmy had somehow obtained a donkey. I don't remember when he did that. So he got ahead of me for quite a while. Eventually, we both ended up at our third abandoned village. There, we looted everything, of course. And then we came across an incorrectly generated ruin portal, which happened to just be a clump of netherrack without the portal and the chest. We decided to name the village the City of Hmm, a name that we quickly forgot. And that was all of episode 10, which turned out to be not that climactic at all. Episode 11 had a rather long name. It was titled Fireworks, Snow Golems, and Nearly Dying. As you can see, this episode is, ironically, more exciting than Double Climax. Also, it was the last video I ever made a thumbnail for.
It started with me walking all the way back home from the city of Herm. I came across a wolf, but because I didn't have any bones on me, I decided to trap it in a dirt box, so I could return and tame it later. When I returned to the base, I finally saw the renovations Luna had done in my room. She extended it to an extra room, and added a few decorations. I'm not sure if that's worth a diamond, but oh well. Also, I started working on crafting the official People's Land flag. Then, one of Jimmy's brothers joined. A different one than the one that killed Gary. Luna's younger brother also joined, apparently. We also decided to use redstone as our official legal tender, so Katsuruni started sorting that out. After a while, I had the perfect idea for keeping a snow golem as a pet. Trap it in a prison! So I began building an inescapable prison- uh, I, I mean, a home for a snow golem to live in. Once it was finished, I gave life to Bob the Fourth, who is still alive today, thanks to my amazing prison- uh, I, I mean, home. At the end of the episode, we crafted some fireworks, and did a little impromptu celebration for the 10th episode of People's Craft at the top of the mountain. We should have done it on the actual 10th episode, but we forgot to do it on the 10th, so we did it late. But, when we started walking down the staircase back into our home, chaos ensued. There was a random zombie in the house, and even worse, someone left the front door open, which meant that a creeper almost got in. I closed the door right before it could get in, but Luna immediately reopened the door to fight the creeper. But, she failed. And that's where the video ended. Episode 12 was even more climactic, as it was titled, Rage Quit. I think you can see where this is going. Also, Creature Thing 68 was here again. The episode started with me finally using the diamond pickaxe I crafted to mine some obsidian to make another portal. And after spending 30 minutes trying to make a portal the right way, I finally built the portal. So we all jumped in to do some looting and mining. The nether side of the portal was in a small closed off cave. To us, it looked rather safe. Little did we know that the chaos would unfold soon after. After I was done mining for resources, I went back to the overworld. Luna had copied my design for the People's Craft flag, and made several variations of it. We all voted on one, and that became the official flag for our nation. Although I would say, it's not actually the best flag for a nation, as it was too complex. Most nations you see don't have a super complicated design. Anyway, I did a little bit of trading with our new currency, and then went to buy some stuff at a shop that Jimmy had built. Then, I returned to the nether to gather some more resources. But while I was getting distracted, sorting my inventory, I randomly got killed by a piglin. The next part of the video gets a little confusing, so I think it's best just to show what actually happened. How, how much do we, time do we have left for people's craft? What? No! No, 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 Note that Creature Thing 68 is right there by the portal. At last, I finally had regathered most of my stuff. But our bad luck was not over yet. When we returned to the overworld, we came to find a witch running rampant in our city. And it was a rather bloody massacre. Each of us was killed with magic at least two times, and the 11 year old me started panicking again. Hey, I need to get my stuff, I need to get my stuff on. <sighs> Here. Uh, Here. Uh. Why? Why? I'm sorry. Why? We died so many times. Here. But while we gathered all of our stuff, 
I came to find that the only thing I lost was my diamond pickaxe. I have no idea how that happened, but it sure did induce a rage quit. Thank you guys so much for making this far in the video. It took over a month to write, voice record, and edit, so it means a lot to me that you watched the whole thing. If there's anything you found that was wrong or inconsistent with the video, just let me know. I might make a corrections video for this later to correct some minor errors with it. After that, I'm not sure when I'll release part 2 of this epic history. Maybe in a month or two. Either way, it won't be for a while, because I'm also doing a lot of other things in my life, like learning Java programming. So, I'll see you guys later. Adios.